Welcome to this week's edition of the Weekly Travel Alert. I'm Steve Glenn. I'm Paul Glenn. And this week, Paul, we're bringing to our listeners the five big predictions I'm making about Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines has been in the news, and I've come up with a list of things I think they're going to do before the end of the year that will have a big effect on you, me, and our listeners. All right, let's do this. Paul, the last month or so, big news, Southwest has historically been the most profitable airline in the industry for, for I'm talking two or three decades since they started since deregulation in 1978. Before then, the government set fares, routes, and everything. When, it, when the airline industry was deregulated, this little airline, Southwest Airlines, started out of Texas, Love Field in Texas. And they broke all the rules. They basically said, hey, we're going to do things differently, and we're going to be profitable. And since that time, they've been very profitable. This past year, since the, the pandemic, we literally have seen a different Southwest. Mm-hmm. And what happened recently is a major investor on Wall Street took an 11% position of ownership in Southwest, and they said, we want more money. We want you to earn more. You're not doing things right. And they actually even asked for the CEO's head. I saw that. Yeah. On a, on a yeah. platter. Yeah. And uh, so they're saying, we want changes or we want somebody's head. And unfortunately, in the cutthroat world of Wall Street, that's how they do things. So I, I put together a list of things that I think they could do to generate millions, if not billions of dollars of extra revenue. So you ready to go? Let's do it. First, I'm going to share with our listeners the five points that made Southwest different. Number one, Paul, was they always flew the same type of aircraft, that Boeing 737. Whereas other airlines have five, six different models and they need a different pilot for every plane. Southwest, any pilot could jump on a Southwest flight and take that plane and take off with it. Oh, and it also made maintenance easier because all your parts. planes are the same thing. So all you got to do is have pl- sets of parts for one s- style of plane. So yeah, I think there were many reasons why that worked for them and why it was something that they've stuck with for so long. The second thing of how they were different is they flew point to point between secondary airports, not using hub and spoke model by other airlines. For example, United will have a hub in Chicago and in Denver. So if I'm flying from Omaha to to New York City, I'll go Omaha, Chicago, Chicago, New York City, whereas Southwest would go point to point. They wouldn't go through a hub, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. And that was a different model that the other airlines didn't do and um, was very profitable for them. Number three was they offered no frills. And I mean no frills, no seat assignments, no first class seating. They all actually made fun of themselves of the peanut fairs, they used to call them, <laughs> where they'd give you bags of peanuts until peanuts caused people to eat. Allergies. Allergies, yep. you bet. So that was number three. Number four was no fees. You could change a ticket. There was no fee. You could get free checked luggage. Free bags, There yeah. was no bags. And flight changes, free checked luggage. Say so they basically said, you know, we're not going to nickel and dime you. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. You pay Excellent. for a ticket, and that's all you have to worry about. And here's my favorite. They had a corporate culture of just happy customers and happy employees. I always and, get a kick out of, you'll see the videos online with, you know, you've got instead of the, the dual uh, safety overview that they do on all the other carriers, you'll get a, uh, get a flight attendant rapping it or singing it or doing something fun. And, and people are laughing and having a good time on the Southwest airplanes. Yeah. And that kind of seems like almost history now because they're, they're getting so serious as well. So here's my five big predictions. And uh, now that you know the background of how Southwest was, now we're going to look in the future. I got out my crystal ball. Okay. I rubbed the crystal ball. You clean it first. And here it comes. Okay. Yes, it's clean. Here we go. Number one, seat assignments. Here we come. Southwest has always had what I call the cattle call. Open seating. Open seating. You, you basically go 24 hours before the flight. Right, you get your check in. check in, and you get your position of are you in the A line, the B line, the C line, and uh, hoping you didn't get into the C line, so you were the last one to stuck load. Stuck in that middle seat. You're stuck in the middle seat. So they're going to come out with seat assignments. I can almost guarantee that. 
Once they do that, number two comes into place. Well, but I think a key to that is some of the other movements that Southwest has done over the last couple of years to make it so they were positioned better to, to obtain more corporate business for a frequent traveler uh, goes down the path. You know, they've, they've come into the GDS, so they're able to be seen with their inventory side by side with the other big three carriers. Uh, but getting the seat assignments is something that's very important to a business traveler. If you're Absolutely. on the road every week or every couple of weeks and you've got a preference, you don't want to have to have the worry of where am I going to get middle seat and, and if yeah. if my uh, corporate travel policy will let me pay whatever it is to get into that guaranteed a that'll hopefully get you that window or aisle seat then you could get stuck so I think this is a smart move if they go down this path in that uh, focus towards obtaining more corporate travel uh, clients and related to that comes in number two get your wallet out as Southwest will soon start charging for preferred seat assignments those are the the windows, those are the aisles, those are the ones up uh, toward the front of the plane. Mm -hmm. Once they have seat assignments, they can start charging for them. Now, you might think that's no big deal. That's, ladies and gentlemen, that's over a billion dollars of revenue they're missing out. And that's why Wall Street's saying, hey guys, you know, I know the last 30 years you've done great. But you're leaving a billion dollars on the table. Well, and everybody else is doing it, and they're actually escalating it right now as well. So, you know, if everybody else is, has been doing it and it's been working and they're actually increasing it, then why wouldn't they get into the game as well? Yeah, and it's really the other nice thing about that is it's voluntary. You know, you don't have to pay for a seat. Yeah. So my third prediction reads, first bag flies free. Now... Currently, Southwest allows, their motto is, bags fly free. You get two bags, you put them on, you can check them in, and you don't pay anything. Now, every airline that I can think of charges you for those bags, mm -hmm. unless you're a member of their credit card or frequent flyer program, yep, right? But Southwest has put that as their banner. That's their marketing. That's almost their it's motto. It's on their airplanes. It's on their airplanes, yeah. So... I sense that there's going to be pressure by Wall Street, and they're going to say, hey, you can generate another billion dollars by charging for, for bags. But I think there'll be pushback by the senior management of Southwest, and they'll say, look, that's our motto. People know us by that. People actually buy tickets because of that. Because of that. Yeah. So I sense there's a compromise. I think we'll go from bags fly free to first bag flies free basically your first one's free if you want a second one you pay for it yeah. and i think that's a stair step now if wall street gets their way that might go away and if it doesn't generate enough money and if southwest isn't that profitable i sense they'll come back they'll at it force again it through yeah so that's my prediction okay. is that first bag flies free number three number four you ready okay all right no first class seats, but premium economy makes sense. I don't sense they're going to come out with first class seating, but I sense they'll do what other airlines have done and put like four extra inches okay. in the first six rows. That makes a big difference. You yeah. Know, there's the, the three of us in this little room right now. Not one of us is less than six foot two tall. And when you're sitting in that standard seat and your knees in that seat in front of you, you know, I think uh, every one of us here would pay a little bit of a premium to be able to have that extra four inches of leg room. Especially now that Southwest is flying across country. Mm -hmm. They're flying to foreign countries. Mexico, They're yeah. going to Hawaii. Yep. Whereas before, they literally, when they mm -hmm. first started off, they were like one hour flights. Yep. You know, everything was one, one and a half hours. Now they're going six hours to Hawaii, that yep. type of thing. So it's a different world today, and I think people will pay for that extra leg room. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Weekly Travel Alert, sponsored by Executive Travel. This is our, what, 38th year? Yeah, we're getting there, yep. We're getting we're there. We're getting there. Every, every episode, <laughs> we're a week closer. Uh, Paul Glenn is the CEO. I'm Steve Glenn, the chairman. And we're located at 1212 O Street in good old Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, ironically, most of our staff doesn't work here. They're all around the country, if not the world, even. We have people that, that work outside of the U.S. even yeah. that work for us. And and uh, we, have, we started virtual agents over 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we were one of the first companies in the world to do virtual agents. So we're having fun on the Weekly Travel Alert. The fifth and last thing that I have on my sheet here, Paul, is this is going to hurt snurdly. We have with us our technical guy, 
uh, hashtag Snurly, which we call Ryan Swihart or vice versa. And uh, he just got a Southwest credit card with a promotion this mm-hmm. spring. Whereas if he got the card, spent $4,000 in 90 days, Southwest gave him a free companion pass. Huh? Now, guess what? That was the best deal in the travel industry so far this year. And millions of people got that. Mm -hmm. Now, that works great when you got empty seats to fill. But when you don't have empty seats, that's not a good thing for an airline. I think this is the last year we'll see the credit card offer for that. I think you'll still be able to get the companion pass if you fly so many miles, earn so many qualifying points. So many segments, yep. Segments and qualifying points. So I sense that's still going to be in play, but I sense that some of the people that got the card this year won't be offered it again because they have no reason to give away something that valuable just to renew a card. Well, and I think that's, you know, it'd, it'd be nice if all the carriers did something along the lines to potentially minimize the number of people that are, are uh, in certain classes of status because now you're to the point where, you know, whether it be with credit cards or, or people actually traveling so much, that uh, you've got so many people there that you lose half the benefit. So, you know, I think this this could actually be something that benefits the consumer, the, the standard consumer in the long run. And I, I would hope some of the other airlines pay attention and maybe make some other efforts to make it so that their status levels have more benefits more but value. for a smaller, smaller quantity of people. You bet, ladies and gentlemen, that's our list of five predictions. These are my predictions. So, you know, I don't know if they'll happen or not. I guess that this is my best guess of what I think will happen. And, Paul, I hit like 7 or 8 out of 10, don't I? Uh-huh. You, you, According to you, you being the judge, that you can twist them just enough that you hit most of them, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, every year, we in the first of the year, first month, I put out 70 predictions of what's going to happen. We'll come back to you with some of those predictions at the end of this year. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. And Paul's going to give you the zing, boom, bang, press this. Please like, subscribe, share, and add any comments or feedback on topics that would be of interest for future episodes. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week.